In this problem, we're told Superman must stop a 120 km per hour train in 150 meters to keep it from hitting a stalled car on the tracks. If the train's mass is 3.6 times 10 to the 5th kg, how much force must he exert? And then we're told to compare it to the weight of the train and give it as a percentage, but I'm just going to be solving for uh, the amount of force he much, uh, must exert. So let's go ahead and write down our given first. So we're given this, and this is going to be the diagram I tried to draw what was going on. So this is going to be the train, and he's got to stop it within 150 meters so it doesn't hit this other train. So let's write down what we're given. So the first thing that we're told is that uh, this train is going to be traveling 120 kilometers per hour. And so we know the initial velocity, or v sub 0, is going to be 120 kilometers per hour. And so we're trying to make it, he's trying to stop it, right? So he's trying to make it so it goes to rest. So the final velocity of this is going to be 0 meters per second. And I'm going to keep it in meters per second, and you'll see why in a bit. But uh, yeah, so he's trying to stop this train. It's traveling at this speed. He's got to make it go to rest. So this is where we get these two values. And then we also know that delta x, or the change in the, cha uh, the train's position, is going to be 150 meters, right? Because he has to stop it within this distance. So we're going to set delta x equal to 150 meters. And then what we're trying to do is find the force. So I'm going to say f equals question mark because that's what we're trying to solve for. And so we know that force equals mass times acceleration. So uh, we also know, I forgot to write down uh, what the mass of the train is. So I'm just going to say mass equals, uh, and they tell us it's in kgs, right? And so we know kgs mass. So it's going to be 3.6 times 10 to the fifth kg. And so this is going to be the mass they give it to us, right? So we have the mass, and if we want to find force, we uh, also need to find acceleration. So they don't give us acceleration, so we're going to have to solve for that too if we want to find the force, because we need both mass and acceleration. So the first thing that we want to do when solving for acceleration is we're going to use one of the kinematic equations, but before we do that, we need to make sure our units align. And if you look here, this is in meters, this is in meters, but this is in kilometers per hour. So we need to change it to meters per second. So let's go ahead and do that. So we know that there's 120 kilometers per hour. And so we know that there's 1,000 meters per kilometer. And so uh, that would cancel, or I wrote this the other way around, so we gotta write it up top. So 1,000 meters for every one kilometer. And so that would cancel the kilometers, and then we need to cancel the hours. And so we know that there's one hour for every 60 minutes, and then there's one minute for every 60 seconds. And so you'll see that the hour and the hour and the minute and the minute cancels. So essentially converting from kilometers uh, over hours, we just multiply by 1,000 and then divide by uh, 3,600 because 60 times 60 is 3,600. So if you go ahead and do this, uh, it's going to be 33.37, and then this is going to be in meters per second, right? Meters per second. So this right here is going to be our new initial velocity, so equals 33.37 meters per second. And so I actually calculated this wrong. It's actually going to be 33.33 meters per second. Uh, so... This is actually going to be 33.33 meters per second. Sorry about that. I just wrote it wrong. And so now we have the initial velocity. All we have to do is solve for uh, acceleration. And so we're going to use one of the kinematic equations to do that. And so the equation that I think best works for this is v squared equals v sub 0 squared plus 2a times delta x. So this is one of the kinematic equations. Hopefully uh, you're good with kinematics now since uh, we spent a unit on it. But... Uh, we're going to go ahead and solve. And so we have all the units, or we have all the variables here. We have v, have v sub 0, have delta x. And we're trying to find a, right? Because we need a uh, to be able to solve for force. So let's go ahead and plug stuff in. So v is going to be 0. So 0 squared is just 0 equals v sub 0 squared. And so we're plugging in the new one, right? 33.33 squared plus 2 times a, and we're just leaving it as a, right? Because we're solving for it times delta x and so delta x is 150 so just times 150 and so now we can go ahead and uh, solve for this so i'm going to move this to the other side so it's going to be minus 33.33 squared equals 2 times a times 150 and so i'm going to multiply the 2 and 150 together so it's just going to be 300 so 300 a if we want to get a by itself divide both sides by 300 
this side would cancel and you'll get that a equals uh, minus 33.33 squared over 300. If you go ahead and do this in your calculator, you'll get minus 3.7 and keep in mind the units are meters per second squared. So our acceleration is going to be meters or our acceleration is going to be minus 3.7 meters per second squared. So now we've got that and we have our mass, right? So we're using force equals mass times acceleration and we have mass, right? This is our mass. We have our acceleration now and we can actually solve. So all we got to do is just plug in our numbers, right? So make sure your units align. So you have to make sure that this is in kg and this is in meters per second squared. Uh, just keep that in mind for other problems. This one is in kg and this is in meters per second squared. So we don't have to worry about it, but just for other problems, keep that in mind. So if we plug this in, uh, we're plugging in. So 3.6 times 10 to the fifth is the same thing as 360,000. So I'm just going to write it like that. So 360,000 times our acceleration, which is minus 3.7. So that's going to go ahead and give you your force. And so if you go ahead and do that, uh, you're going to get that it equals 1.33 or minus 1.33 times 10 to the 6 newtons. So this right here is going to be the force, but keep in mind, this is going to be what the train is doing. And so we have to find what he's uh, exerting. So it's actually going to be positive. So we're going to change this to positive. So the force is going to be 1.33 times 10 to the sixth uh, N or just Newtons. So this right here is going to be uh, the force he must exert. And so I'm not going to do the other parts, but uh, you can go ahead and do those on, on your own. And so the answer to the first part of this problem is going to be 1.33 times 10 to the sixth Newtons.